Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about five non-technical books that I think every software engineer should read. I wanted to cover four important areas with these recommendations. Mindset, productivity, finances, and entrepreneurship. But before we get started, if you have not already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss videos that I upload to help you excel in your software engineering careers. We are almost at 100,000 subs right now, and let's see if we can get there pretty soon. I will be doing my biggest giveaway yet when we reach that milestone, so if you're not subscribed, please make sure you do. Also, every book I mentioned today will be linked in the description below. With that said, Let's get straight to it. The first book in this list is Range by David Epstein. Whether we realize it or not, just by trying to have a successful career in software engineering, we subconsciously put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Not only is our definition of success hyperinflated, but the path we've convinced ourselves that leads to that success is very structured and one dimensional. Be born intelligent, start coding early, excel in high school, take advanced placement classes, attend a top engineering school, get a few internships before graduation, and then land your dream job at a fang company right before graduation. Heck, even one of my favorite authors, Malcolm Gladwell, popularized the 10,000 hour rule, which states that you need at least 10,000 hours to gain mastery at any particular thing. And mastery, given the right circumstances, could vaguely relate to success right? So if we mess up even slightly along the way, are we doomed? Um, David Epstein, the author of Range, thinks otherwise. He believes that the idea that there is one proven path or formula to success is a myth, and I wholeheartedly believe in it. If you've watched my video, 20 years of coding my software engineering journey, you would have seen that I have failed throughout my career. In fact, I probably failed more than succeeded. And I would like to believe that I've had a fairly successful software engineering career. So I can attest what this book talks about, that there is no one path that leads you to where you want to be in life and that it's never too late to pursue something that you're interested in. If you've ever doubted on yourself whether you can start a company at 45, whether you can switch to software engineering after 20 years in finance or learn the latest tech stack after being a C++ developer for 12 years, this book is for you. But even if you've not wondered about these things, this is still a great book for you because it explores various examples of successes and how multiple people have made it in life even though their journeys have been completely different and their journeys have started at completely different stages of their lives. So definitely check this book out. The second book I recommend is Grit by Angela Duckworth. As software engineers, we are very privileged, especially in the Western developed countries. We are very fortunate that we get to use our brains to do most of our heavy lifting and the salary is great, the perks are great, and the work-life balance is usually great as well. But if the only major problem in your life is that your back hurts because you have to sit and code for a few hours every day, chances are likely that you've lost perspective on what hard work and perseverance means. And that is probably why not everyone can get into entrepreneurship because all the luxuries of holding a corporate job get thrown out uh, and the difference between a successful venture and one that fails often boils down to perseverance and hard work. Mark Cuban was very accurate when he famously said, today's generation is mostly made up of entrepreneurs. They want to be successful entrepreneurs but they don't want to put in the effort that is required to do so. Also, many successful leaders and business people are lauded as great geniuses, but the author of Grit, Angela Duckworth, argues that talent and intelligence matter less to success than grit, which is the personality trait behind perseverance and hard work. This book explores what grit is, where it comes from, how it drives success, and how you can develop it. So in a world where we can get used to having things nicely laid out for us, I think this book is a fresh breath of air that reminds us to keep on holding to powerful character traits like strong work ethic, hard work, and perseverance. I highly recommend it. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, these books and recommendations are all great and all, but I don't have time to read all of them. I hear you. If you're busy and short in time, or if you just don't like reading long books, or you can't afford to buy so many books, but you still want to learn about the core concepts discussed in all of these and many more other great books, then I recommend Short Form. 
who have also kindly sponsored this video. Shortform has awesome guides to nonfiction books. They are like super powered book summaries. They are very detailed, cover all of the book's key ideas, have interactive exercises, and add smart insights and analysis. It is a great way to take these books that you've always wanted to read and learn their ideas at a deeper level. They have literally every genre you could care about, including work and productivity, health and relationships, and history and society. Their goal is to make sense of every meaningful idea published in every medium, not just books, but also podcasts, videos, and newsletters. I read over 20 books in 2020 because I was on a one-year break from work, which afforded me a lot of extra time. However, I have a full-time job now, I run this YouTube channel, work on side projects, so I really don't have enough time to read that many books. So I've been using short form as well. And if there's a book I really like and I want to read end to end, then I can always buy that specific book since I already have a very good idea about what that book is all about. Also, every single book listed in this video is available on short form. Visit shortform.com slash Utsav to receive five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% when you get an annual subscription. All right, moving on. The third book I recommend is Atomic Habits by James Clear. You can have the right mindset and the appropriate psychology, but those alone won't bring about changes in your life. Big changes are a result of small everyday habits, and this book helps you build exactly that. Few common questions I get during my monthly Q&As on Instagram are, I want to improve my coding skills, but I lack the motivation to do so. People say that they can code for hours, but I feel that I need to drag myself even through one hour. There are so many things I want to change in my life and improve, but I just don't know where to begin. While these may seem like lack of motivation or interest or passion, you'd be surprised that bad habits are the culprits behind most things that manifest as lack of motivation or passion. More than 50% of your daily actions are automatic actions or habit that have been formed through repeated actions over the course of your life. Some are good and some aren't, but without understanding how habits are formed and how to change them, progress becomes extremely hard. In this book, James Clear provides you the techniques that will help you discover who you currently are, detail the four stages of habit formation, explain to you the psychology of behaviors, describing how actions become habits, why some habits stick and others don't, and how to reframe your life to create new habits and maintain them over time. I think this is one book that everyone that aims to have a good and balanced life needs to have in their bookshelf. Book number four is all about avoiding distractions. I recently made a video titled YouTube could be ruining your software engineering career. The main motivation behind that video was my own frustration at today's culture of immediate gratification in combination with people's short attention spans. And the problem is that we are too used to watching a seven minute video to mend our broken dish washer or watching a 30 second TikTok to get our entertainment fix or checking out notifications for one second to stay up to date with our lives. Anything that's worth doing, trust me, takes effort and care. But sadly, in 2022, we live in a tech-dependent, app-centered, notification-ruled world where one, it is too easy to get distracted, and two, we have already been conditioned for years to consume said distractions. So you may have the right mindset, you may be prepared to work hard, and you may have set up some foundational habits, but as long as you keep getting distracted and losing your attention, you will not make meaningful progress towards being successful at what is important to you, your values, your relationships, or your work. We keep complaining about the lack of time, but it is not the lack of time that is preventing you from getting stuff done. It is the lack of focus. And to improve this situation, I recommend that you read Indistractable by Neil Eyal. In this book, he explains the four-part model for what he calls gaining modern-day superpower of indistractability. He teaches you how your distractions start internally, why your schedule should be based on your values instead of your tasks, how you can diminish the power of external triggers, and how you can commit to yourself so that you can start driving your life instead of letting distractions drive you. This book is a must-read, more so in 22 than ever before. Okay, let's move on from mindset and productivity over to finances. I've met with so many people, some of whom are my friends and colleagues who make very good salaries but don't care about long-term investments or don't focus on growing their wealth. 
See, you can make $50,000 a month, be able to live in a multi-million dollar mansion and drive a fancy supercar. But if you don't have short and long-term investments, you don't have any financial security. You may feel rich today, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck. Take that job away that pays you 50 grand a month and add an event that changes the desirability of the field that you work on and you're suddenly on the street. No million dollar mansion, no fancy supercar. You're probably thinking this is obvious, but you'll be surprised just how many people don't put that much thought into investing their money. I once read somewhere that financial security is the difference between being rich and being wealthy. Being or looking rich is cool and all, but what you really need to focus on is building your wealth. And if I had to recommend one book that you can treat as your gateway into investing, I would say The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham, which is the fifth book in this list. One of the world's greatest investors, Warren Buffett, read this book when he was 19 years old, and he still calls this by far the greatest book written in investing ever. The ideas in this book are timeless. It covers in detail how market behaves, how investment is different from speculation, and how to identify profitable investments. A word of warning though, this book covers a lot of investment topics, some of which can be scary and overwhelming for someone who's new to investing. If you find that that is the case for you, you can always hold off on this, start reading some basic books on investing, then come back to this one. But whatever path you choose, I do recommend that you come back to this book eventually because it is just a gold mine of valuable information. The final book in this list is about entrepreneurship. It is The Lean Startup by Eric Rice. This book is literally like a bible in the tech entrepreneurship community. It is a collection of practices and processes that help you uncover what your customers really want. It's data-driven and experiment-based, so you can make sure that you can prove, not speculate, that you are making meaningful progress. The goal of this book is to help you launch your product as early and cheaply as possible so you don't waste time and money, which obviously is super critical for a startup. This book teaches you some important concepts like MVP, cohort metrics, A-B testing, virality, and pivoting. As software engineers, we all have some inherent interest in entrepreneurship. It doesn't really matter whether we actually want to launch our own startup or not, but just by being software engineers, we constantly build products and release them to our customers, which in themselves are like mini startups. So while this book is titled The Lean Startup, the concepts you learn in this book apply to any project that you're working on. Being data-driven and failing fast are valuable traits that apply to many facets of life as well. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Well, that's the list I have for today. Let me know in the comments below if I missed a book that you really love and think that everyone should read. I'd love to hear about it. If you're interested about technical books for software engineers, do check out a couple more videos that I've made where I give my book recommendations for software engineers specifically. I'll link them in the description below. And as always, if you found this list insightful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss software engineering videos that I post every week. If you have a question to me directly or for monthly Q&As, follow me on Instagram at engineeringwithutsa. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.